the first step in the process of gene expression is transcription transcription is copying the information present in dna on rna this is a stretch of dna having two strand one is running in 3 dash to 5 dash and the other one is running 5 dash to 3 dash direction let us simplify these strands like this so one is in 3 dash to 5 dash and the other one is 5 dash to 3 dash and let us have this sequence on this like this and the sequence on complementary strand is this transcription it occurs only on one strand of the dna it occurs only on the strand running in 3 dash to 5 dash direction and this is called template strand The other strand that is not participating in the transcription is known as coding strand. Coding strand is also called sense strand and this is called anti-sense strand. Now there are two questions. One, why transcription occur only on one strand? Why not in both the strands? Second, this strand which is running in 5 dash to 3 dash direction is not participating in the transcription and still this is called the coding strand. So let us find out the answer for the first one. Why transcription occur only on one strand? There are two reasons for this only on one strand number one if transcription will occur on both the strands then two different types of rnas will be formed because we know that these bases are binding according to the complementary rule. These are not duplicate. A is always combining with P and we know that thymine is replaced by uracil in RN. So two different types of RNAs are formed. What does that mean? Two different RNAs or to be specific mRNA. It means two different types of proteins. It means two different traits. So one gene is controlling two different traits. So this is going to complicate the process of gene expression. So only one template is participating in this. Second one is if both the strands are participating in the transcription, then these RNA, they are complementary to each other. And when they are complementary to each other, what would happen? They will form a double stranded RNA. And the whole purpose of transcription is lost because this is not going to be translated into proteins. So now the proteins, they are not going to be formed. Then what is the logic behind the process of transcription? So this is the reason that this transcription, it occurs only on the one strand. Now the question, uh, answer for the second question, he, why this 5 dash to 3 dash is known as the coding strand. Now uh, make the possible RNA that is going to be transcripted on this strand. Say let us do this. So here this will be U, then A, then A, then G, then G, 
and C, and C, then T, and then E. So now compare the sequence of this and compare the sequence of this. These are exactly similar. So because the newly transcripted RNA is going to have the same sequence as present on this 5 dash to 3 dash strand. That is why this is called the coding strand. And whatever we say regarding to this transcription that the promoter is attached to 5 dash, terminator is attached to 3 dash, we talk in terms of a coding strand. Right? So this part is clear. Now let us come to the transcription unit. What exactly is the transcription unit? This is again a stretch of DNA. One is in T dash to 5 dash and the other in 5 dash to 3 dash. A transcription unit include three things. Transcription unit it include initiator there is an initiator site then structural gene and the third one is terminator so there are three component of the transcription unit the initiation part is always found on the 5 dash of the coding and 3 dash of the template strand. Again, I am writing this is template, this is coding, and this is our initiator or promoter site. This is the site where enzyme RNA polymerase binds. Not only RNA polymerase, along with this, there is sigma factor in case of prokaryotes. And in the eukaryote, instead of the sigma factor, there are other initiating factor. Okay, so now the terminator. Terminator is on the 5 dash of template and 3 dash of coding strand. This is terminator. When the enzyme reaches the terminator site, the process of transcription stops here. The part that is present between the promoter and the terminator is the structural gene. So this part, this part is the structural gene. Now this structural gene that is present here. This is the structural gene. The structural gene can be monocystronic or it can be polycystronic. Now what is mono and polycystronic? Structural gene I said can be monocystronic. Monocystronic means when it is just made up of only one cystron. Only one cystron is there 
and this is found in eukaryotic. In eukaryotic, cistron, one cistron after another cistron is never found in a continuous state. For example, if this is the DNA, in between this DNA, there, there are certain stretches that I am drawing with the red color. These stretches are never transcripted. These parts are called introns. I said that these parts are called. So the part which are the intervening sequence between two monocystron are called intron. And this part is called exon. So exon and intron. So it means that eukaryotes, they have interrupted coding sequences. Cistron, then there is intervening sequence, then cistron, then intervening sequence. So it means that the process is complicated in eukaryotic cells. But in prokaryotic, it is simpler. They are having polycystron. Polycystron means a continuous coding sequence is there. It means if these structural genes are of prokaryote, then they may have more than one cistron in this. So one transcription unit in case of prokaryote may have structural genes made up of polycystron having one promoter site and one terminator site. But in case of eukaryotes, one transcription unit will have promoter site, structural gene having only monocystron and a terminator site. We will do the process of transcription in the next video.